What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for another episode of Dead Not, a game that I like very, very much. This is one of those games that I am so pleased to present because like Screwfly has like really nailed it on the head with this one. And what they were trying to do, I don't even know how conceptually, it's just such a unique concept for a game. Not necessarily like the Marines going onto a ship, but just like the presentation of the game. Very, very unique and it blows my mind that somebody sat down and like thought about this and was like, yeah, we can make this work. And I would love to ask what their influences were, like what games did they play? that inspired the creation of this game. I bet it was Critical Path. This game looks just like Critical Path. There was another game that I used to play back on DOS too, where it was kind of like Space Hulk, but you had no weapon. And basically you were just trying to avoid the bad guy and you had a porthole like this because you were in like this weird mech suit and you were walking around trying to find upgrades for the mech suit. And just like, I can't remember what the game was called at this point. Either way, everybody's rezzed, so I cloned everybody. They're all back up. It cost us a smooth 9,000 knowledge. It's expensive. Don't lose characters in this game, especially not in the early game. It's better to restart than anything else in the early game if you lose people. Heavy weapon suits ready. Which is odd because we haven't gotten the medium weapon suit yet, so... It's a little bit strange. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth, though, because frankly, I'm afraid that he'll bite me. Gift, I don't know. Horses seem kind of bitey. I've been bit by a horse before. Horses are kind of assholes. They're like one of those animals that's like too smart for its own good. And so they just get super wily. Eh, not down with that. I'm not okay with that. So the light weapon suit... I think we'll probably just go for the heavy weapon suit. We might as well make ourselves as safe as possible. If we can afford it, let's do it. We've got a heavy sensor suit too, even better. So let's take the heavy sensor suit. And that's not going to leave us with a whole lot of things to buy. Our sensors were doing okay in the previous episode. So let's see if maybe there's something here that we can protect ourselves with. We have a level 1 firewall. Let me go through here. we got a medium chemical beam and the enemy's resistant to chemical. So that's not going to help us. Any better scanners? A strong scent scanner? Not going to help because we're not fighting animals or anything. A level 3 decryptor would be nice. It'll make him hack quicker, but I think I'm going to wait on that one. We've got a medium heat field, a medium blast field. I need the medium melee field. There's no point in me taking a percent. Our enemy uses only melee damage specifically, so... A heat field might help versus... A heat field might help versus those security guns, though, so that we don't die so quickly. I don't know. I don't know what kind of damage the Sentinels do. You don't ever have that information available to you. I, mean, I assume they do beam and, like, physical. I'm sorry, I assume they do beam and heat, probably. But I couldn't say for sure. Let's look at phase type B. Oh, we have type C as well. It's an ethereal manifestation that can pass through objects. Highly unusual forearms, moves along the ground, but can leap long distances. Okay, so that one can't fly. That's the difference. So it's kind of just, like, on the ground, but everything else looks similar. Type C, we only know that it's medium-sized. It has a corporeal dampener, which means that I assume that it dampens, like, physical damage. Yeah, right there, you can see. Wow, it's got armor versus everything, so it's, tar it's hard to kill. It's very hard to kill. It's also quite a bit more perceptive and reactive than everything else we've been fighting, so it's going to be quicker, too. That's no fun. All right, well... Sidearms. What do we have for sidearms? We only have sonic weapons. How do the threats do versus sonic? Actually, Sonic does okay versus him. It might be worth adding the bonus damage on. I think I'd rather stick with, for phase type A, I think I'd rather get a Spectra weapon, but we're going over to Heat right now, I think. So maybe the Heat weapons will help. Let's swap everybody out right now. Did I finalize that purchase, by the way? I did not. So we have that right there. I don't really want any of the sidearms at the moment. None of them appear to be that helpful. Passives, though, we might have some luck right here. We have a medium melee shield, and so that takes eight times defensive slots. I don't know if the heavy suits are going to have that. What does it have? 16 weapons and 9 to sensors. That's got kind of like a weird distribution of stuff. Huh. It's got a lot of resist, though. Let's finalize this real fast. We'll transmit that order, and we'll get everybody equipped first, and we'll see what they're sitting with. We'll put everybody's defense back up right here. You have a plus 7 versus, like, everything. So I assume it'll probably be nice. Ooh, yeah, we're getting good right there. Although, if you saw... Alright, well, with our medium weapon right now... Or, I'm sorry, with our large... We should probably get something, like, more useful. So we got a heat beam right there. I'll put that on for right now. The small spectral blade is probably the best call because they're weak to spectral. Let me buy some other stuff, though, just in case. He's got nine scanner slots, too. What can I do with a passive scanner slot? It gives you a cloak. Do we have an optical cloak? Yeah, go with the optical cloak. Okay, so we'll get an optical cloak because that's how the enemy sees us from what I remember, right? Offensively, type A. Sees us using... I guess it just becomes aware of us kind of just like by nature of the fact that we're there. It almost seems like they're like oceanic jellyfish or something. Because they don't really use optical to see us, but I guess we could take it. 
primary. Do we have any better weapons right here? We have a medium chemical beam, but they're resistant to that, aren't they? Phase type A. Their defense. Yeah, they're strong versus chemical, so I don't think there's any point bringing that in. I might just give everybody heat beams or something. The shock weapons might help out. And we do have access to a shock axe, which is going to take eight weapon slots. What do we have over here? Is that a primary, though? That's a primary, isn't it? Yeah, so I kind of don't want to be running around fighting ghosts with melee weapons. I'd prefer to stay out of that. Have anything for... We got a decryptor right there. We've got a medium heat field, a light blast field. I'm probably just going to keep things right where they're at. Oh, we've got super stims now, too, just in case we want to do ultra drugs and get mega high. All right. Well... A melee shield seems kind of nice. What does that require? A defensive slot. Who has defensive slots? Just like the defensive suit? What happens if I put a... Let's put a... Where is that at? We've got a shield suit. We haven't bought any of the shield suits. That's why. Let's see what the shield suit's got for us. Because if I can give him a gun and a shield, we can use him as kind of like our advanced guy to kind of like run out there. I'd prefer that he use like a projector, but... I don't know. It seems okay to me. The power recharger might be nice for our hacker, too. That's the other thing that I'm thinking about. He got a medium tech suit on. Does he have any... What does he have remaining? Oh, he's got five defensive slots? Well, let's find something small for him, then, that can protect him. He's got a small power. He's got two times tech slot for that. He's got... What does he have? Let me filter this by defense here. He's got a light chemical shield. Five times defense, and it requires five defensive ports. He only has... Oh, he has five. Yeah, let's get that for him then. I mean, it'll give him resist to everything else too. So, it's something. We'll give him one of those. Let's transfer the order. That'll give him an optical cloak that we can throw on somebody. Probably all of these guys right here so that they've got like this shimmery effect going on while they run around. Let's give him the heavy weapon suit because it seems the most useful. We'll go with the light heat beam. I wish we had a medium heat beam to make this work a little bit better. We'll go with spectral blades. We've got a passive. Give him a medium opti optical cloak. That'll help him be harder to see. So right there, we can only be found by thermal and sound now. So that's good. With her, we're going to do the same thing. We'll throw a heavy weapon suit on her. We'll go with another medium or a light, me a light heat beam. Spectral blade for if they get close. We'll go with a medium optical cloak. Buck a barrel. We're going to mirror that right here. we got the spectral blade. Everything's looking good right there. Medium optical cloak right now. Hopefully nothing super resistant to... Do we have a heavy sensor suit right now? No, we only have the weapon suit. How much knowledge do we have left? 5,000. Okay, so we can't buy the new suit yet. But what we'll want to do is we'll just keep him squared away, I guess. We'll just try and keep him safe. That's all that we can really do. This guy over here has a medium tech suit. We should be able to slide a passive in right there for a chemical suit. That did help out a lot, so his resistances are a lot higher right now. Secondary, he can't afford to bring anything but a pistol, I don't think. Yeah, he can only bring a pistol, so that's what he's going to bring. Everybody's equipped up. Let's go to the new place on the star map. That's going to be over here. Let's go. Execute that jump. Not going to go through any more of the logs or anything because I feel like we pretty much hit everything right now. We know what's happened. A bunch of these ships came over here and picked up a bunch of artifacts and trying to get rich. They ended up getting themselves killed by these weird ethereal monsters that spawn. This should be the last mission as far as I know. The campaign is made up of four missions from what I understand. So if we make it through this one, this is it. We beat the game. And you can go back again and play it again with like a different configuration of soldiers or whatever. I like the ones that we have. This is what happens when you min-max though. The first mission tends to be a lot harder than when you get further into the game because then you have the equipment to actually survive. All right. So let's go ahead and have, have a look at this thing. We've got a military cruiser. Entities detected on board. Integrity is low. Be cautious. Areas will be inaccessible. Power is distributed primarily to atmosphere. The internal security priority is running the watchers. Energy fluctuations found. We need to get the ship's log. So it's going to be on the bridge. This is actually a lot easier than some of the other stuff we've been doing. Breach time. Let's go. Skip it. Fizzle on in. We're going to fizzle our way into the ship. Some people use a door. We just fizzle our way in. All right, so everybody's looking a little low on power right now. What we need to be aware of is that the Watchers are going to be working overtime on this mission, so we just got to watch out for it. Power is a little bit low right now. What I might suggest is if we have, if we can find a power conduit, we can actually recharge ourselves a little bit quicker than we would normally do so. My assumption is that the medium or the large suits probably have more trouble getting their power back. Code Arrell, everybody up, step off to the side of the door right here, and it looks like they're already going after our video signal, which is unfortunate. Coderella's got the door open. What I need is for Blippleberry. Throw my scan up in that room. Let me know what's in there. We got ourselves an artifact, but it looks like there's no security protocols in here. Breach and clear. That's the protocol for now. Wow, that works so much better, but you see how fast we lost electricity right there? 
our suits definitely take electrical power, so we need to watch out in the future. What I need from Blippleberry right now, keep your power high, throw me a scan up inside that room. You don't even need to open the door, really, so just, like, things to be aware of. Blippleberry, get the door. It's gonna take him a second. Let's take Bucket Barrel up in here, and if she gets shot at, she gets shot at. If not, it's fine. Got an artifact over here. Let's go ahead and get everybody up into the room. We're gonna try and breaching. Hey, all of you guys. Oh, the heat closed the door. Bucket Barrel, get started on that thing. The nice thing about these heat beams is that we should be able to, like, not destabilize rooms. Beams are good because they're very, very accurate. Because your shooter can actively watch the beam and where it's going and guide it that way. Now, we have a power conduit on here. Let's see if we can siphon off something for us. I'm going to increase the power here. Because if you're in a room with a big circle in it, you actually can, you're actually you siphoning power while you're running through the game. So if your power is low, turning up the power to a system will allow you to siphon off and regenerate power more quickly. You can counteract that. You can counteract that by going through and bringing a tiny little fusion cell with you that you can snap onto your suit. And they can use it whenever they need it. I'm going to try and breach and clear this actually very, very cleanly if we can manage it. Straight in we go. We're losing our data signal, so let's go ahead and boost that. The game is messing with us right now, trying to make us panic, but we've actually got weapons that they're weak to. That's the big thing in this game, is you have to equip a loadout that your enemy is weak to. If you don't do that, then you're going to get yourself in trouble. What's going on over here? Oh, wow. Oh, we're destabilizing the hallway. It's on fire? Oh, that's not good. Okay, so we destabilized that entire hallway on accident. My bad. It's still, it should still be fine, but is everybody okay? We set the monster on fire. That's crazy. I've never seen that happen before. I've never used specifically heat weapons before, though, either. So we're a little bit low on power. If there's an engagement in here, it's going to get ugly for us. However, while we're here, get rid of that thing on the quickness. Because it'll make our life easier as we go through the zone. Another one back here. Put more rays on it. Yep. You can call me Sunshine because I got all them rays. There we go. Sunbeam. Okay, we're losing the video signal. Let's go ahead and we'll fiddle with that for a second. Oh, hell, that scared the hell out of me. I wasn't ready for that. We set the mob on fire. We should be able to shoot it down now. Good. Keep investigating bodies. We need to get some knowledge out of this thing because there's a lot of equipment I'd like to grab just in case this isn't the end of the game. Let's increase power to this location real fast because we are siphoning off the location. You'll see right there our power is regenerating pretty, ra pretty rapidly. And then the second that we get up out of here, we're going to decrease it so that now that we've got the energy we need from the system, we're safe. Let me open this door up. We're going to step back real fast. I'm going to have Blippleberry throw a scan into this room. It's a small room, so we shouldn't have much to worry about. Oh, we got an enemy. Oh, they're coming through that wall right there. So I think we got a pretty good indicator that wherever our foe is at, it's in the next area. Oh, my God. We're running. Increase the power real fast. I need power to this location so that we regen regenerate faster. We are actually destabilizing a lot of the ship right now. Wow, that is a lot of aliens that we're up against. We may have to fall back through and attack from a different direction. We got one right there, but we're running out of electricity right now. All right, so back into the engine room. Let's go. We didn't completely and totally destabilize this room yet, but it's getting there. It's working on it. Let's jump up in here. I don't see a power grid. Where's the conduit at? I need a conduit so I can recharge my weapons here. We'll go around the long way since we've already been in here. Give ourselves a chance to recharge, too. The big lucky thing for us right now is that the enemy is slow. So while they have so much HP, we can actually run circles around them if we need to just by avoiding fighting altogether. But think about that. If you're on a spaceship right now, you got to fight ghosts and stuff. How terrifying is that? I don't know that I would be equipped for this situation. Even as, like, a diehard soldier slash marine mercenary, dealing with ghosts is not in my MO. That is not a thing that I just inherently know how to do. Look, give me a scan in that room. There we go. If you want to, I know I realized that I never brought up how to scan. So if you want to scan, how you scan is you select your guy with the scanner, you control click, and then you click on a location, and that's how you scan. That guy went down with a quick style. He was done very rapidly. All right, let's investigate this corpse. That's the body of Laborka. What we want to do is get to the bridge, which is going to be way over here, and we want to do that as hastily as possible. Give me a scan. Oh, enemy coming through the wall. Okay. This room is destabilizing right here. So we need to clear all these threats before we go in. If we don't clear the threats... Actually, let's just go around. We're destabilizing large chunks of the ship right now by standing our ground, and we just need to hustle. Actually, give me Blippleberry. Scan this room. I need to make sure that there's no 
He didn't find anything, so we're good. In we go. A couple of dead bodies over here. I'm going to keep an eye out for artifacts, although the scan would have turned them up if we had seen them. Keep investigating. Each of those bodies is worth like 200 knowledge, so it's kind of in your best interest to keep like looking at them and making sure that they've got things that you want. Open up that door. Looks like we've got an empty corridor right here. I'm just trying to move as quickly as possible. Speed is the name of the game in this mission because the ship is falling apart. Scan up that room for me. It's the dining area. We have nothing detected in there. Coderella, get up in here. Scan that down for me. We've got a power conduit, but we're at full power, so it's not a big deal. However, this is a good fallback zone for us should we have the need for more power. In the galley, things are falling apart a little bit. No, 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 no. Get out of there. Get out of there. Okay, so, oh my god, we've got a security system in there. Give me a scan right there. Oh my god, that thing came straight through the wall and took out one of our guys. And now Blippleberry's on fire? What? Oh my god, okay, so apparently somebody strafed him with a laser on accident. Oh, we got to Rooms destabilized, get out, open the door. Oh my god, that was so close. We almost died right there, like seriously. Now, the big problem we need to deal with is that security sentinel in there. We can't get to the bridge without getting rid of that sentinel. So, unfortunately, our weapons right now are destabilizing the ship. But what I need... I need to start getting some of these sentinels out of the way. And this might take a little bit of finagling. Got one back there. Lock him out. Got one right there. Lock him out. Ah, he got me. Shit. Okay, so... With that firewall where it's at, we have to hope that this dude goes left. If he does, we can lock him out through here. Oh, we gotta go around through that way? Oh, that's weird. Why can't we just go that way? Yep. Okay. So maybe go through there then? Oh, we gotta get this thing. There's no way we're making it out of here alive so long as... What's his electricity looking like? Coderella? He's got plenty of electrical, it looks... Oh, no. His electrical's way down. Okay. I need a firewall right there. What's your electrical looking like? You still good? No, he needs to regenerate for a second. Is there a power conduit in this room? Give me some power real quick. Increase the power to this location. So that we can regenerate faster. I know that's going to make the watchers worse. But it also means that I can work a little bit faster. Come on, I need you to regenerate. Coderella, help me out here. Got another one coming in. I hear the sound that it makes when we've got something detected. That's the firewall that I need right there. We may have to work our way around this. I don't like it, but it may have to happen that way. Unlock this door. I don't like this at all. This is not going well for us right now. This room, I'm hoping... That door is open right there, though, with that turret... Damn. Okay, so that means what's going to happen here? I need to unlock this door, and I need everybody to go over to here, just like avoiding that turret as much as possible. Now I need Coderella to close that door from a safe spot. Just close the door. It's fine. We can't hack from right here. What we can do is open up that door. Oh, it opened the door. So that door is by default closed. Okay, so now I'm isolated. Close that door again. Watcher's messing with me right now. Oh, and the button's on the other side of the door, too. Okay, it's on you, then. I need you to, like, hack. If you can hack, I need you to hack. Oh, and we just got run up on him by an alien. That's no good. All right, get out of there. Just avoid him. Don't fight him. I need that to be closed, like, right this second. Dining area is locked off so that we can't get in there. It's going to, yeah, it's going to open that back up again. All right, so Coderella, keep yourself safe, but I need you to just go off. I mean, that's it. Like, I need Coderella to go over here, and Coderella's got to hack this thing. He doesn't have a choice, and there's so many watchers running around that I can't really make this happen. Open that door. Everybody leave. Just get out of there. Just keep ourselves safe from the security system for right now. But until we get past that gun, we can't go to the bridge, so... 
It looks like we're hacking from a room over here or something. I, we're long range hacking, which is always a problem because you've got like a delay in between how long it takes things to get there. So... My recommendation right now is we just gotta wait this thing out. Just gotta wait till all these things are at an advantageous position and once they are... We're going after that turret right there. Alright. Give me this firewall right here. Nope, you didn't make it? What blocked your firewall right there? Nothing was in the way. Like you were good. God. And they just like sit around sometimes too. That's the other issue. Alright, so we got those two firewalls up. Next firewall we're going to be leaning towards is going to be this one over here. Come on, get your electricity back. We have to take that firewall. Alright, so now once his electricity comes back... Hopefully... Oh, it's bouncing off from that direction too. We have to take control of that turret. So now that the turret is under our control, what we can do... Is we are going to hustle as fast as we can back through here. We just have to run. Like, that's all you can do. You're like, and I ran, I ran all night and day, so I wouldn't get shot with a laser. Like, that's, that's a pretty good motivating factor. I could write a song about not getting shot with a laser. That seems pretty awesome to me. We want to watch this firewall right here. If it goes down, we're in trouble. So, what I need is for you to open that door. We're not looting. We're not going anywhere. We're just trying to get through here. Unload that. Keep going, everybody. Keep going. Don't stop to fight. Don't stop to fight. You're going to destabilize the hallway. Get out of there. And if you destabilize the hallway, we are 100% toast. All we have to do is make it to the bridge. That's it. Like, if we can make it to the bridge, we win. That's game. If we destabilize this big hallway, though, we die. The bridge. Okay, so we've got an artifact up in here. We can't destabilize the bridge. However, it doesn't look like there's a security gun in here, maybe? We're not getting shot at, so anyways, let's get the ship's log real fast. What I need, there's no enemies in here. Get the ship's log. Okay, so mission is done. Oh, there's an extraction point in the bridge? Oh my god, we just lucked out so hard. That's why you always bring somebody with intuition, because this door might not have shown up if we didn't have intuition. We're out. Let's go. Whew. So close. So close. Oh my god. So we get this final log right here. Our live assets. Paladin, Blivelberry, Bucket Barrel, Daka Dackets. Or Dak... Da da Daka Duckets. There we go. I can talk. Coderella. Cloned assets destroyed. Okay, so some of our guys are cloned, which means we put them out of their misery at the end, I guess. I'm not really sure. Two doors were hacked via network. Coderilla performing the lion's share of the work. 22 firewalls help prevent watchers from interfering with your activities. I cannot tell you how well that that campaign went. I don't know if you want to do another campaign, so just to give you a little idea. Our final log. This is Captain Curla Tumarta of the cruiser Jara Ra. We're en route to Sector 9, you. The crew seems eager to see some action. No doubt it's related to our recent victory against the Two, two High La High. Or the Two High Lie. There we go, the Two High Lie. The crew seem happy to be working together for the moment. My relationship with my commanding officers is similar. I wouldn't call the crew demotivated, but they're certainly not enthusiastic about the mission. I suspect that half the crew will want to move on soon, and I don't blame them. Some of the crew have decided to take their minds off the job with some surprising results. There's now primary atomic generators circulating among the crew. I don't pretend to understand it, but it's keeping their spirits up. While the crew seem happier, I need to keep them focused. It might just be me, but the crew seem more motivated now than they have been all week. We have a few more missions up our sleeves, so let's hope we can keep it up. Wow. I don't even know what this is. Our sensors have locked onto an odd reading. There's not much out there, but it won't hurt to investigate. We followed the signal to what looks like a vast debris field. Some kind of catastrophic event must have occurred. Once we pinpoint the source of the signal, we'll send a team to investigate it. The exploration team just arrived on the ghost ship. The result, to put it bluntly, is carnage. I ordered the crew to return, bringing back anything notable, and we locked up the artifacts for now. We're glad to finally leave this place. We've secured anything of interest, but I'd like to investigate them personally. It's best we get them back to command untouched. On a personal note, I've not been able to sleep since the away team came back. Looking forward to some time off. Brutal. In recognition of his efforts, Paladin has been granted permission to return to Earth. All previous records, criminal or otherwise, have been expunged. 
So that's how you serve the Commonwealth right there. To give you an idea how this goes, we actually got one of the harder campaigns. Very, very difficult to start out against ghosts because you have no weapon that can kill them, and you destabilize every room that you walk into by just overwhelming machine gun fire. So, you can get bugs. Sometimes there's bugs on the ships that are like Tyranids. Sometimes there's actually aliens with like rifles who are like humanoid and actually sentient. And so you have to fight against like other tactical teams. That one's really difficult, but it doesn't happen very often. I've only had it happen once where the enemy was like shooting at me and stuff. It got really, really ugly. It sucked. But anyways, this is Dead Knot. I suppose I'll stop the campaign right here. If you want to do another campaign, we can check it out. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for Dead Knot. I will see you in future episodes. Take care out there, everybody. And hi do. And remember, min-max those characters. Min-max those characters. Bye, everybody.